Welcome to the fourth episode of our series on mathematical language and symbols. In the last video, we had some introduction on sets, and in this presentation, we will continue discussing concepts that are related to sets. Particularly, we will be talking about the universal set, the subsets, and Venn diagrams. But before we continue, do not forget to like this video, hit the subscription and notification bell to stay updated of future videos. The universal set is the set of all elements that are being considered. So it's us who decides what is our universal set. The symbol for our universal set is the capital letter U. Subsets, on the other hand, is a relationship between two sets. Say we are given two sets, A and B. This is the symbol for subset. This is read as A is a subset of B. And when will A be a subset of B? If and only if every element of A is also element of B. If all the elements of this set are also elements of this set, then A is considered a subset of B. If we identify even just one element of A that are not found in B, then A is not considered a subset of B. Let's have more on subsets. These are subset relationships. The first one is Redas. A is a subset of A for any set A. This simply means that for any, any set that we have, itself is a subset. Any set is a subset of itself. Why? Because all the elements of A are also elements of A. So, A is a subset of A based from this definition. Also, the second statement here is read as the null set is a subset of A for any given set A. The null set is an automatic subset of a. The set itself and the null set are automatic subsets of A. These are called the trivial subsets because we know that they are subsets without actually knowing the content of the original set. We do not know what the elements of set A are. It's just given as a set. But we are sure that A itself and the null set are subsets of A. Another concept, the concept of improper subset. If B is exactly the same as A, B is called an improper subset. If one set is a subset of another set and it happened that they are the same, meaning they have exactly the same element, they are equal sets, then one is called an improper subset of the other. All the other subsets that is not improper is called a proper subset. Let us provide some examples for this. Let our universal set be the set containing six elements, the numbers 1, 2, 3, and the letters A, B, C. Let us identify whether each of the following sets here is a subset of our universal set or no. If it's a subset, we identify further if it's an improper subset or a proper subset. Comment down below your answers before you proceed watching this video. You may pause if you need more time. Let's take a look at the first one. We have set A. It's containing six elements. One, two, three, and A, B, C. That's exactly the same set as our universal set. So it is a subset. A is a subset because all elements of A are also elements of our universal set. So yes, it is a subset. But more specifically, it is an improper subset of the universal set. Why improper? Because they are actually equal. The null set, as we mentioned a while back, is an automatic subset of any set. Actually, even without knowing the elements of our universal set, we are sure that the null set is a subset. Set B, that's the set containing 1, 3, A, and C. Is this a subset? We have to check if all of them are elements of our universal set. 1, 3, A, C are found in our universal set. So the answer is yes. B is a proper subset of U. 
it is called a proper subset. Why proper again? Because it is a subset at the same time, they are not equal. We can still find a member or an element of our universal set that are not elements of our set B. How about set C? 1, 4, A, and C. Look at that number 4. Is 4 an element of this set? It's not. So C is not considered a subset of the universal set. D. Containing two elements, 1 and C, are 1 and C elements of the universal set? Because if it is, then D is a subset. Yes, it is a subset. Specifically, it is a proper subset of the universal set. Let us proceed to our Venn diagrams. Venn diagram is a visual representation of our sets or subsets or their relationships. The Venn diagram was developed by an English logician, John Venn. To use the Venn diagram, we draw a rectangle, a rectangular region to represent our universal set. And then inside it, we draw ovals or circles to represent subsets. In this particular Venn diagram, this is our universal set, this rectangular region here, and it has one subset, it's subset A. Let's provide an example for Venn diagrams. Let us consider the following. We are given a universal set containing these elements, and then below it are three subsets, set A, B, and C, and let us draw a Venn diagram that is equivalent to this one. And what is that Venn diagram? This one, a rectangular region to denote our universal set. We have to make sure that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, B, C, D are all inside the rectangle. And yes, it is. Since there are three subsets, we're going to draw three ovals or three circles. We also put the names of the set. So A, B, and C are the names, the same names that we used here. We overlapped our subsets because there are elements that are common to three or two of our subsets. For example, one is a common element among the three sets here. So we need to prepare a region that is common to the three sets. And that's the region where we put the element that is common to the three of them, and that's one. This region here is where we put any element that is common between A and B, and that is A. If we look at A and B, they both contain the element A. That is true to all. Three is outside any of the subsets here because we cannot find three to neither of the three sets. It's not included in the subsets, but it is included in the universal set. So it has to be inside the rectangle still. That ends our fourth episode. I will see you in the next video to discuss the different operations on sets.